Okay. Okay. Um, just whenever you're ready. Yep, I'm good to go. So start with just saying and spelling your name and what your title is. Dennis Kretschmann, D E N N I S K R E T S C H M A N. Uh, teacher at John Ball Zoo School, specialize in math, science, environmental education. Perfect. So Dennis, uh, you've been here, uh, you know, and involved in the growing the zoo school program for 39 years. What's it mean to to read in a national publication that zoo school is the one of 25 coolest schools in America? Well, finally, people are finding out nationwide about how cool this program really is, and obviously it. Uh, um, makes it's one of those um, perks you get that makes you want to work harder and kind of a payoff, a paycheck of sorts. Yeah. What, what do you think it says about? I mean, you, you the teacher, uh, the, the schools. I mean, you guys made this program uh, over that period of time. Um, there's got to be a source of pride in seeing, hey, we are one of the coolest in America. Yeah. The whole program's been developed with the help of administration, but they've allowed the teachers to do our own thing, and it fits real well into. Um, the objectives that the school system insists on. Um, well, a lot of what we do is um, project-based, and it's amazing how those projects are they're more real life. So when we teach math, we don't just do a set of worksheets. We go out and measure trees, do some mapping, um, do some statistics in the zoo as well. So the kids are getting some real live application type skills out of this program. So talk a little bit more. What's the what's a day in the life of a zoo school teacher and zoo school students? Well, a typical day doesn't exist because it changes from you know day to day. Because we we're, one of the things we are is very flexible. So if the zoo has an opportunity for us to go up there and see an animal being uh, worked on or whatever, we take advantage of that. But um, typically, we'll do the math, we'll do the science, we'll do social studies, all those, but it'll be project. Kids do a lot of presentations, so quite often the day starts with a student presentation on some subject of their choosing. A particular animal, um, it could be geothermal heat, it could be anything they're really interested in. Um, and that provides us with great learning opportunities. Um, we don't have to write lesson plans for those, it just automatically happens. Um, a lot of time out in the zoo, uh, Mr. Fortney will take them up into the zoo. I tend to take them more out into the woods. So we may be measuring trees, maybe calculating the amount of wood in a, in a, uh, a forest, and then presenting to the landowner what we found. Um, so some real life things happen. Mm, that's great. So, so, you know, while we're in a classroom here, your classroom is really more of the, the woods and, and uh, the zoo itself uh, and the park that's right outside your door. The classroom here is, uh, as you've noticed, there are no windows, so we try to get out as often as possible. We do spend some time in the classroom. We need the chalkboards. We have animals in here that students take care of as well as plants, but we do try to get them out as much as possible. Instead of sitting in here and having a discussion, there's some logs out in the park that we'll sit on and have a discussion, or read a book instead of in class, go up, sit in a nice spot in the woods and read about it. Um, and then we have hikes daily. Um, covers our phys ed requirements because by the time they get to the top of that hill and back down, they've had a good workout. <laughs> That's great. So how many kids uh, do you serve in the program? Ideally, we have 60 students broken down into two 30 um, class, student classrooms, which switch back and forth. Um, they'll be in here a day and then in Mr. Fortney's room a day, but we aren't strictly like that. We'll work back and forth. If I need to find them, they need to find me. They know where we are. We also do a lot of team teaching where we have all 60 kids working on projects and we're moving back and forth and uh, kind of being consultants to help them along with their particular project, presentation, whatever they're putting together. That's great. But 60 students is the, uh, the ideal size, upper limit. Yeah. But you, you know, in part of speaking a little bit to the, uh, the demand for the program, I mean, year after year we have a lot more applicants than we do uh, number of seats <coughs> available and, and again that just kind of speaks to the quality and uniqueness of the program. Um, yeah and it's been talked about since the very beginning of this program to expand the program. One of the really nice things about this program that the students appreciate and take with them is the closeness. 60 students may seem like a lot but by the end of the year we've become a family and they know everybody in the class and working in groups so we don't want to lose that closeness and that family atmosphere. 
um, by expanding it too much, but yet there are a lot of students out there that could benefit from pro this program or programs like it, and that's one of the hardest things is to turn people away from something that you know would be so beneficial to pretty much every student in Grand Rapids, you know, could benefit from some of the things that we do. Talk about the relationship with the, the, um, with the zoo staff. I mean, obviously you're located right on the grounds, the administration office for the zoo is just down the hallway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, talk a little bit about how the benefit of, of that interaction and relationship with, with these, the, you know, the veterinarians, uh, the, 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 the zoologists, the skilled staff at the zoo, and what that means for both you as a teacher and students. Well, obviously, it's a great resource. If students are studying a particular animal in the zoo, the lion, um, whatever it happens to be, they can talk to the keeper who really knows not just about lions in general, but about that specific one that we have here, how it got here, how uh, they're going about conservation efforts. Um, it would be nice to have more time spent with the keepers, but obviously they're pretty busy. We also uh, sometimes have the vets come in and talk, and this year the vet that we have in the zoo is now was actually a former zoo school student, which is pretty cool. Um, all their staff works with us, whether it's um, identifying the plants in the park, animals in the zoo, helping us set up and run our aquarium. So if we have a problem with one of our classroom animals, we can call on an expert from the zoo to come down and help us with that. Um, the new construction in the zoo, we get information about that. And when you have this vernacular, this tramway going up the hill, well, there's a great inclined plane subject there and we get the information and the, the measurements from them and apply that in our classroom. So they really do get involved in the workings of the zoo and have a lifelong attachment for that as well, as we hear from students all the time from former years and how, how they are into conservation, animals, et cetera, in their lives. That's great. Um, do me a favor, look into the camera and say, uh, GRPS Zoo School is the coolest school in America. GRPS Zoo School is the coolest school in America. That's good. If you want to try that just one more time. Do it one more time just for the fun of it. Yeah. GRPS Zoo School is the coolest school in America. Ditto. <laughs> okay. Anything else you want to add? Oh, I could talk for hours, so don't get me started. <laughs> no, let, let John have a. All right. All right.